Welcome back. It's been about five months since I last looked at our Milo watch bands. And in that time, the owner Andre has now successfully set up a facility in Romania to make some high quality leather watch bands. Now I'll have a link down below to his blog where he really goes into all the details of what he's doing there. But the short version is that they're a high quality Butero Italian leather strap and they're done in more of a minimalist rugged style. Yet because that leather is so good and the finishing on it is so nice, I think it can work for both casual as well as dress watches. And here I think Armillo is advertising this as ruggedness meets refinement. And while it's kind of marketing buzz speak, I think it's actually accurate here. And Andre did give me two 20 millimeter straps to try out. And I did try this on a variety of watches and he gave me both a blue and a whiskey strap. And when it really comes to the style and the looks, I think it's really best to let the watches speak for themselves here. Although I will say that I was initially skeptical about that blue strap. I wasn't really sure what it would go with, but I actually found a few watches that I think it looks really good on, especially this bronze Phoebus Eagle Ray. And as for that whiskey strap, well, really classic brown just goes with everything. One of the cool things that Andre is doing here is that he set up a two-stage process and the first stage is where most of the work is really done, where they're treated, beveled, and mostly cut to size, but they aren't fully finished until an order comes in. That way, they can effectively be made to order and offer the ability to customize them if there's something special you want. You really just have to ask. But one of the things that is included is the ability to stamp your initials on the back, which is kind of a cool touch. Now, all of this comes with a little bit of a price tag at $49 which personally I think is more mid-range when it comes to leather. There are definitely some cheaper options out there, and I've definitely seen some much more expensive options out there. And overall, I think it's a good price when you really consider the quality of the leather here, but it's definitely a price that you should buy when you have a specific watch in mind, and not buy it as kind of an impulse buy or stock up on a bunch of them when you find a good price for it, which is really what I tend to do with NATOs. And one cool thing is that they are offering these in a variety of sizes right off the bat, including the very elusive 21 millimeter strap. So this could be an option for those that are looking for a really good strap for their Bambino. And I tried both of these 20 millimeters on a couple of different Bambinos. There is one issue, but I'll talk about that in a second. But let me talk about the straps first. And first off, the leather quality here is really good and maybe some of the best I've ever seen. It has a really nice smooth finish on the front and a little bit more of an unfinished edge on the back. And I'd honestly really love a jacket made out of this. And one interesting thing I did note is that these straps don't have your typical new leather smell. It's more of a flowery, rosy type smell. So I actually asked Andre about it. But it's actually part of their prep process as there they coat the leather in a balm to help protect its longevity. And it's that balm which actually has that floral scent. But regardless of the odor, it is working some magic on that leather, as while they are very thick, they're also very nice and flexible. So almost no break-in period whatsoever here. And the buckle is also very nice and solid with the Armilla Griffin logo. There's also matching stitching on those straps, but rather than just being decorative like on some straps, here it's actually serving a purpose. And it does have a rather impressive sounding name, but honestly, I don't know much about it beyond that other than it's a wax linen thread. The spring bar holes here are rather oversized, and Andre mentioned that they're there to help protect the leather long term, as when you install them, you can rotate them up you know, 90 degrees, and you can get full access to the spring bar without having to push the leather out of the way. On the back, we can see that more unfinished edge, as well as some of the stamping. On one side, it lists that it's Italian full grain leather, and my initials are there, they're just being blocked by the keepers while on the other, it clearly shows that it was made by Armilla in Romania. In my recent review of the Bronze Eagle Ray by Phoebus, I did critique the leather strap it came with, as I didn't think it was quite up to par with the watch. But I also mentioned that it was just made more apparent when I put a really good leather strap on it, and it's actually this blue one. Now, I wound up wearing it on that strap for about a week, and that was in some hot and humid days. So you can see that while it did leave an indentation in the strap, the surface is still pretty good looking, with no stress or stretch marks. Overall, I think it's a really good leather strap done right, with a style I really like, and I think it's a style that can really complement some of those really good looking tool watches. 
And I only really have one complaint, but I do think it's an important one. And it's one that I didn't discover until I really tried putting on a variety of watches. While generally the thickness of a watch strap is a real positive, here on that end with those oversized spring bar holes, I do think it's a little too thick. Which when you try to use it with a watch that doesn't have a lot of clearance between the spring bar and the case, can either make it really difficult to install or actually impossible to install. A few of the watches I didn't have any issues putting them on, while others like the Phoebus, they were a bit tight, but I did eventually get them on. But there were a couple that were just impossible to use until I used a curved spring bar. And in retrospect, I just wind up using a curved spring bar to begin with with these in the future, as that extra wide loop really works well with a curved spring bar. And for the record, the Bambinos were a tight fit, but I did actually get these straps on them without a curved spring bar. So I'm not really sure if there's anything Armilla can do on their end, other than use, say, a thinner leather, but that's actually the last thing I would want them to do, as that nice thick leather is what makes these so good. So I really do like these straps, but it is an issue you should be aware of. Basically, if you've ever had any trouble putting a thicker NATO on your watch, you probably have a problem here too. And if you are wanting to order one, you can use a discount code relative time for about 15% off. Although in full disclosure, it is part of an affiliate program and I would earn a small commission. But I like them enough that I've actually ordered a couple 22 millimeter straps for myself. So you might see some more of them in the future. But let me know what you think about these Armilla straps down below, or if you think there are any other strap companies I should take a look at. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.